DJ 53rd Annual Lord's Passover. 53rd Annual Lord's Passover is going to be held down here in Florida. It's going down. You're here tonight to get a chance to be righteous enough to be worthy of God. Come on to save you. That's right. It's going down. The Lord's 53rd Annual Passover. When we say we no coward, we stop that business. We no cowards up in here. Book your hotels now at the Holiday Inn Express and Suites. The IHG Hotel, 301 Tucker Lane, Cocoa Beach, Florida, 32926. Pass with all your dishes, pots, and sports nights. I gotta like this. This is like an apartment room. And a hotel room. You know what I mean? This here right here is about to be holy ground. This is gonna be holy ground. All our beautiful, wonderful brothers and sisters from all over the world. You understand? We can boast that now. Brothers and sisters coming not only from this every state, but from all over the world. I heard the numbers this year is ridiculous. We had to buy out the whole hotel. Friday, April 15th at the Space Coast Convention Center. This is going to be glorious. glorious. Shalom, D.C. We're the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge Shout out of 1 West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York, and the Commander General Yohanna. Since 1969, we've been teaching the truth of the Bible. And the truth is that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians are the true Jews according to the Bible. And that our oppressed is the devil that the Bible speaks of. And the reason why we do not know this truth is because the truth has been held from us, has been disguised from us. And what, what I'm about to bring out is the truth that your Christian pastors cannot bring out, that they do not understand. And if they do understand, they are purposefully hiding it from you. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. And we're going to see exactly how he feels, how the most high feels about the so-called blacks, Hispanic and Native American Indians. The people that everybody across the earth cast down and, and disgust. How everybody throws us in trash. Treats us like, like, like we're the scum of the earth. But guess what, black man, Hispanic man, Native American, any man or woman? The Most High says something very different. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people. So he's saying right now, he's talking, the Most High is talking to the children of Israel. The so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Native American Indians. He said, we are a holy people. Keep going. Unto the Lord thy God. He says, we are holy unto the most high God. Right? Holy just means separate. It means to be set apart. The most high is set apart against every other thing on earth. Every other being on earth. And he's saying, we are set apart. Just like he is unto him. Right? The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. The Most High chose us, not because we 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 uh we we number in the many, or we are the first uh, people on the earth, or anything like that. The Most High chose us because He wanted to choose us. He says we are a special people, set apart unto Himself. Keep going. To be a special people, He says we are a special people. You might not think that we are special because you look at our conditions and you see us uh, in the gutter. You see us cleaning up after our oppressors. You see us uh, taking care of our present elderly and sick before we get to take care of our own elderly and sick. You may think that, but the Most High says that we are special according to him. Keep going. Unto himself. He says we are so special, we are, we are set apart unto the Most High. But get this, how special are we? How does the Most High feel about the only people that he loves, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians? 
because the Christian church tells us lies. They tell us that there is equality. Everybody, whoever loves Christ, whoever loves God, is equal in, in, in his eyes. But we're going to read the Word of God and see what the Word of God has to say about the so-called Blacks, Reds, and Native American Indians. Above! Equal to. Above! Below. Above! Beside. Above! He says we are above what? All people! He says we are above some people. All people! Just a little bit. All people! Just the Indians. All people! Just the whites. All people! Just the Asians. All people! Just the Africans. All people! He says we are above all people. Keep going. That are upon the face of the earth. That are upon the face of the earth. There cannot be any rhyme or reason why you can uh, misread that. The Most High says that the so-called blacks, Hispanic and Native American Indians, are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. But with that comes something special. Comes something that we need to abide by. Give me First John 3 and 4. What the Most High said, if you read down in Deuteronomy 28, he said, he will give us everything on the earth. He will put us on top. He will make us the rulers of this world. Are we the rulers of this world? We are not. Why? Because we broke his commandments. We broke his laws. The Most High says, if we are to be on top, we need to follow some law and order. Because anybody who does not follow law and order, and you're supposed to be in charge, no one is going to follow you. Just look at our person today. Look at, look at what America did to, uh, uh, to, 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 to France, where, how they, they went behind their backs. And France was supposed to be their allies. They went behind their backs on the, on the uh, arms deal. Now, we were, they were supposed to be friends, and it was supposed to be some sort of agreement, but they, they looked at that agreement and said, no, we are not going to do that. So the Most High gave us a set of laws, statutes, and commandments that we need to obey so that we could be on top. And since we are not on top, it, it always makes sense that we broke his law. Now the Christian church will have, you, will have you to believe that those laws are done away with. Well, I'm here to tell you the word of God, and the word of God says, no, they are not. They can't even tell you exactly what a sin is, but they'll tell you, do not sin. You go to any Christian church, and they'll give you some arbitrary idea of what sin actually is. Well, we're about to bring out the definition according to the Bible, according to the Most High Word. What exactly is sin? Read what you got. First John chapter three, verse four. Whosoever committed sin, whosoever committed sin. This is talking to to so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Whosoever commits sin, this is the definition of it according to the Bible. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law. Keep going. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. I'm here to tell you that we're on the brink of World War III. War is here. It has not come to the doorsteps of America, but it will in a short span of time. How do we know this? Because we've been bringing this out since 1969. World War III is at hand. And those sinners, the people who are breaking the Most High's law, statutes, and the commandment, are shaking in their boots. Not the men back here. Not the men who actually know the truth. Not the men who are actually abided by the Most High's law, statutes, and the commandments. The lights are not going to be the same. Life will not be the same. World War III is on its way. And if you're scared, you sh and if you're scared of your so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American Indian, you have nothing to fear. What that means is, is, is one of the signs that Christ is going to come back and avenge you, black man, Native American Indian man, Hispanic man. He's coming to free you from the oppression that we have been under since, the, since, since our oppressor came to these shores. Right? Read that from the top, one more time. First John chapter three, verse four. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Drop that. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. We're going to go into exactly some of these laws, statutes, and commandments that we are breaking on a day-to-day -day basis. Why? Because our Christian pastors failed us. 
Why? Because I, I, we listen to the white supremacist uh, ideology of Christianity. Don't you know that Christianity is supposed to keep us in the dark? Supposed to keep us against the Most High? We, we go into this Bible and actually read black history, black excellence, Hispanic history, Hispanic excellence. And we will learn who are the true savages on this earth. And it is not the people that are on reservations. It's the people who put them on reservations and broke every single treaty, every single agreement they put forth. But this is the reason why we are in such conditions. Why? Because we listen to our oppressor. We listen to the people who put us in chains and, and, and whip our backs to put their knees on our neck and kill us on national TV. This is the reason why. Here's one of the reasons why. Here's one of the laws that we need to obey until death. Not for a little while, not for, not for most of my life, but forever. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 1. Now these are the commandments. He says, now these are the commandments. These are not suggestions or guidelines. The Most High is saying he's commanding us to do this. This is an order. We don't, we don't, we don't get to pick and choose what we have, what we want to do. This is what the Most High is saying. Keep going. The statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. So this is what he's saying: the the laws, the statutes, and the punishments. If you decide to break the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments, the Most High is teaching us this. Right? Keep going. That ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. Whether we be in the land of our own people, which we are not, or we in captivity, which we are, or how we got there is, is what we do once we are there. The Most High said we are to do this until death. This is a commandment that the Most High gave to us. Keep going. Verse 2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life. All the, like I said, we are to do this forever and ever and ever. Drop that. Give me Leviticus 20 and 10. Why? Because this is one of the laws that the Most High said, says for us to keep. And somehow we do not keep this. And because we do not keep this, we fill the jail cells, the prison houses, and the cemeteries because we do not, we decide not to keep this. We decide to, to put on the armor of uh, the ideology of our oppressor and take what is not ours. And because we try to, we do that, we are destroyed. We fill the prisons. We fill the jail cells. We fill the cemeteries. All because we choose not to obey this commandment. Read this. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 10. And the man that committed adultery. And the man that committed adultery. We're about to get into exactly what adultery is. Right? We fill the prison systems and cemeteries because we decide to break this law. We keep reading. With another man's wife. Read it from the top. Verse 10. And the man that committed adultery. So we got a man and he's doing an act. He's committing adultery. How is he committing adultery? With another man's wife. With another man's wife. So he's, he's laying with a, with a woman who is already married. Right? This is adultery according to the Most High. All those songs are talking about a man, Mrs. Steal Your Girl, about a man taking another man's woman is evil and wicked. And God hates that. He thinks it's disgusting and it's despicable. We are chosen, according to the Most High, to be above all of that. That's right. This is what the Most High is bringing out, right? And we, because we listen to that crowd, we celebrate that nonsense, we are the ones that get punished the most. And when I say we are the ones that get punished the most, we are the ones that get caught up in these so-called love triangles and get put to death breaks up families. All those domestic violence cases that are out against brothers and sisters because someone, some man chooses to sleep with another man's wife. 
The Most High God told us not to do this centuries ago, millennia ago. We're, we are not to do this according to the Most High God. Right? So I'm about to bring this out. I'm going to keep going according to what the Most High says. Read that from the top. The book of Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10. The man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery. So this is the punishment. The man who, who sleeps with another man's wife, that man who, who's, who, uh, who is committing adultery, keep going, with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer, the adulterer, and the adulteress, and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Maybe. Shall surely. Maybe. Shall surely. They will be put, they will, will be what? Put to death. The Most High says they will be put to death. This is what the Most High's law, statute and commandment says. And the reason why it has to happen like that is because if we don't have that, if we don't have that order, that operation, we'll have a, a 50 to 60 percent divorce rate, just like we have in America. We'll have step daddies and step mamas. We'll have baby daddies and baby mamas. We'll have child support cases up the hard parts. This is what the Most High is saying. You, if you, if woman, if you lay with that man, and that is your husband for life. Man, if you lay with that woman, that is your wife for life. Shalom, Israel. It's that time again. The week of Passover is packed with exciting events. Hosted by the ISUPK and Commanding General Yohannes. On Tuesday, a deep sea fishing trip with the generals. Arrival and boarding time at 7.30 a.m. The boat leaves at 8 a.m. sharp. Then on Wednesday, April 13th, join us for the annual lamb slaughter from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Making sure the children of Israel have fresh lamb for the Passover. Then, after that, the ISUPK is having a fish fry from 4 p.m. until, which will lead to the scripture breakdown class with General Mahayim. Then, on Thursday morning, Hebrew Academy participants will see if they have what it takes to endure the Hebrew Academy trials. Commanding General Yohanan has something special lined up for the children with a children's party from 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Come join Commanding General Yohanan on Coco Beach as we renew our oath unto the Lord. by a hotel ballroom, all black and Hebrew Academy dinner from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. And then on Friday, April 15th at 5 p.m., join us for the Lord's annual Passover as commanded in the scriptures at 5 p.m. sharp. On Saturday, April 16th, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's right, we're going to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Commanding General Yohanna has it all lined up for you, Israel. Come keep the Lord's Passover. Shalom.